Sorry, my friend. This is for my, my microphone. I can't work. It is dark, actually. Je vais vous montrer ma... l'église de mon pays. Under the title, One More Christmas, with unfulfilled expectations for Cyprus, we organize today a photographic exhibition displaying real facts for the 39 years of Turkish occupation of the town of Morfu and the villages of the surrounding area. Like the other occupied areas of the Republic of Cyprus, Morfu, my own birthplace, located in the northwestern part of the island, remains under the control of the Turkish army since 1974. The occupation forces prohibit the return of the lawful residents to their homes and properties. Archaeological sites, sanctuaries dedicated to Aphrodite, goddess of love, settlements revealed by archaeological excavations from the pro-ceramic Neolithic period and the Roman times, palaces and ruins of temples from the Roman and Hellenistic times, the theater of ancient Soli, Paleo-Christian Basilica and very important Christian monuments and Byzantine churches spread all over the northern part of Cyprus are enclaved, destroyed, looted or turned into stables. This Christmas marks the 39th anniversary of the Turkish invasion against Cyprus. 33,000 people were violently expelled from the town of Morfu and the 26 villages of the district, among a total of 200,000 Greek Cypriots who became refugees in our own country and abroad. Despite the huge blow they suffered, 
The loss of their properties, jobs and homes, the refugees thrived hard throughout all these 39 years to rebuild their lives. Even at these hard and strange times of unprecedented economic hardship, because of the unfair haircut of deposit imposed on Cypriots, all Cypriot refugees dynamically claim our right to return to the land of our fathers and ancestors. Today, the Mayor of Morfu, Mr. Haralan Bospitas, and the President of the Community Councils of the 26 occupied villages of Morfu, Mr. Lefteri Sandoniu, are here with us presenting this informative material and photographic exhibition. The photos depict our long cultural heritage, which is deeply rooted throughout the centuries. They reveal our long turbulent history and our struggles for liberty and independence. Moreover, they show the current tragic condition of the town and its surrounding villages, which forcibly have been forced to change their demographic character, suffered ethnic cleansing, changes of street names and cultural rape. We call on the European Parliament's active cooperation and solidarity to our common struggle for the implementation of human rights and the European agri-communitaire for the citizens of the Republic of Cyprus. I also welcome here today the delegation of the Committee of the Missing Persons of Cyprus, who still tries hard to find out what happened to the thousands of missing people of Cyprus. Please don't forget that every Christmas there is an empty seat at the Christmas table of many families of the missing people of Cyprus. Mothers and fathers die without ever finding out what happened to their beloved missing sons. Wives never learn where their husband was killed or disappeared. Children and grandchildren wait for the Committee of the Missing People to identify by DNA techniques remains of their fathers and grandfathers excavated in burial sites all over the occupied area. It is indeed tragic that 39 years after, Cyprus still remains divided with 37% of the territory under Turkish occupation. It is unacceptable that Turkey, a country wishing to become a member of the European Union, remains an occupying force against a European member state, depriving Cypriot European citizens of their freedom of movement, the right to return to their homes and property, and to enjoy all basic human rights that the European citizenship endorses, that is, security, freedom, and free movement within our own land, our own country. We ask our fellow MEPs to work towards exercising pressure on Turkey to withdraw its occupation forces from the island and to abandon its intransigence and work towards a just, viable and long-lasting solution to the Cyprus problem. We ask you to show your strong support for our just struggle for a free, united Cyprus. Dear friends, we do not seek bright glory. We do not dream of trophies. We, ask, we only ask this much, the least. In this wide world, we demand the land we were born in. We want to return back to Kyrenia, to Famagusta, to my native place, Morfu, because it is not fair for so many thousand Greek Cypriot refugees who are also European citizens, to be denied basic fundamental human rights. We ask for Europe to show its solidarity. We ask for the European Parliament to be really working towards a free United Cyprus without Turkish troops, without occupation armies. I now wish to welcome the uh, mayor of the occupied town of Morfu for his speech and then I welcome all my fellow MEPs who are going to share this evening with us 
by saying their own messages as well as short poems dedicated to Cyprus and also to the missing people. The Mayor, Mr. Haralambos Pita. Honorable members of the European Parliament, Ladies and gentlemen, Koda QR in Cyprus in the tragic summer of 1974 can only be described as ethnic cleansing, with 200,000 people being displaced from their houses, deprived of their property, and sinking refugees to the south part of the island. Turkish invasions also left behind thousands of dead people, but even more tragically, our cultural treasures and national heritage have been destroyed or illegally exported and sold abroad. Our Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to this photograph exhibition, which is the result of a hard and devoted work. Since August 1974, the destruction of the European civilization has been systematic and ruthless. As you will see, the, the pictures speak to themselves and portal it to this tragic situation <coughs> to, the, to its actual extent. Tradition and civilization will be moved by these pictures and we will and we and you will use all his or her influence religion. We are not talking only about Cypriot Greek or Turks. We are talking about every man and every woman or any civil of every European citizen for for democracy to the European Union as it has been decided in the Copenhagen submit. We have to call the island that should be respected by both communities with international or European Union for our children, a reunited and a prosperous cycle. We condemn the Turkish intransigence, whose main objective is the permanent division to be driven away by force from the place you were born and grow up. Again, I would like to thank all of you for, com for coming to this exhibition for expressing your support in our efforts to preserve our common heritage and terminate the presence of foreign groups on Cyprus, on the Europe. I really thank all the MP. The poems, I've got three poems here, all of which are very appropriate and very apposite. The first one is called Promenade. The moonlight circles above the neighborhoods, seeking tirelessly and tearlessly for the missing persons, unfolding its thoughts one by one, filtering its memories one by one, spreading its pale balm from shore to shore to soothe your wounds, my island. The evenings come and go from the orange trees of Morfu the lemon trees of Lapithos to the seas of Kais and praise freedom in hymns. The second poem is Women in Black. Your history, my island, recounts the struggles and gallows for centuries now, the fall and missing years now. The sun of liberty, deep red, sinks into th Thank you very much, Mary. Now I shall give the floor to my colleagues here, uh, starting from Anne Sinclair. The words you are going to hear are uh, translations of the songs we are going to listen in a while from the municipality of Stromolos, which came on. And this issue is close to my heart. And I think it's a, an unimaginable torture that for almost 40 years now, families have wondered about their loved ones and where they are and what happened to them. It is not commonly known that the whole beautiful island of Cyprus is part of the European Union. It is within the EU borders. But of course, the key community is suspended for the northern. So for the last 10 years almost, 
part of the European Union is occupied. And it is incumbent upon the European Union to do everything possible, especially to a candidate country, to make sure that A, the missing people's families are notified of what happened to their loved ones, that B, no new settlements are made in Northern Cyprus by Turkish people, and C, that is the United Ireland once again. Now I would like to just read this short poem by, sorry for the pronunciation, Ivagorius Parientres. Parientres, I'm sorry, thank you. It's very thought provoking. You have found wine for the immortals and you drank. Death is your life, but dead you will never be. Thank you, Nikki. No, wait a few minutes. Uh, now Cecilia Wilstrom is going to read something in Greek and actually is the Cypriot dialect. Come on, Cecilia. I know you can make it. You can do it. Well, everybody has spoken about the tragedy, the Cypriot missing persons. I just want to underline that this is a European issue. It's a European tragedy since 1974 that has not been solved. But we are waiting. Garderumen, meram nichtan nafisisi enas aeras, stunton topon, pun panemos, tsian tori pote. Drosian, Jana Fexi, Carderumen, Tofos, Chinis, Tismeras, Ponaferis, Don Catenan, Che Drosian, Che Trospasian. A toi, Vanessa, as a spot. Thanks, Rotir, Tim, Tim, Proebria, Stas, Stinky, Pro. Είναι, είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο για μένα, αλλά τώρα προσπάθησα. Γαρδερούμεν μέραν νύχτα. Μέχρι το τέλος. Nikolaos Salambragos, Knut Fengerstein, Mrs. Kratza, Mr. Kubagis, Mr. Tarambella, and all our other uh, good uh, colleagues, Silvana Rapti, Jesula Pagliadelli, and I think uh, the company of MEPs is really increasing. Thank you so much for your solidarity, for our just cause. Keep working for Cyprus, keep striving hard, because Cyprus deserves to enjoy freedom and reunification. Now I give uh, the floor to Lefteris Antoniou, who is representing the occupied communities of the area of Morfo, and then we will listen to the uh, songs. Honorary guests, dear sirs, madams, on behalf of the Union of Occupied Communities in the Nicosian District, I would like to address today's event, expressing our gratitude to the member of European Parliament, Mrs. Antigoni Papadopoulou, for the invitation to present part of this photo exhibition prepared by the Union of Occupied Communities in the Nicosian District. Today, we are pre presenting to you only the 18 panels with the pictures and archives materials of the 18 occupied communities located near the town of Morfu and are spread across the Morfu Plain. There are a total 39 occupied communities in Nicosian District waiting patiently for 39 years to be freed from the Turkish troops and are expecting the reunification of the island as in the pre-1974 period. For every one of the 18 villages occupied in the area of Morfu, there is a small text in Greek and English language referring to archival and scientific sources indicating the Greek origin of these villages for centuries. We are hoping that we will get your support for lobbying against Turkey, the occupied country, so as to return the occupied land of our country to its rightful inhabitants. We demand vindication and return to our village and our towns. Thank you.
I'm here because I believe in human rights. I believe that we should stand up against those who put fear and intolerance into us. But most of all, I hate bullies. And what I think Turkey has done to Cyprus is to bully Cyprus. And they're not just bullying Cyprus now, they're, bu they're bullying the rest of the European Union. Because despite being a candidate country, they occupy part of the European Union. So I'm calling today for the, all the countries of the European Union and indeed the world to stand up the bullet to the bully that is Turkey. So we are calling the UK to do something about that? The UK government, obviously the UK has an integral part of this and they, and they should use all their influence. The European Union, with its situation as the Turkey as a candidate country, I think the United Nations. Ministers, as I said in my speech earlier, this is an intolerable, unimaginable torture for the family as we enter 40 years of them not knowing what happened to their loved ones. And here we are, not, nothing to do with the European Union, a European neighbour. It's intolerable and we should do something. Let's not make it 41 years. Είμαι εδώ για να στηρίξω μια πρωτοβουλία μια συναδέλφου γιατί νομίζω ότι οι Κύπροι ευρωβουλευτές θα πρέπει να ενώνουν με δυνάμεις βρισκόμενοι μέσα στο Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο Είναι μια πρωτοβουλία για τους αγνοούμενους και όχι μόνο αγνοούμενους Ελληνοκύπριους και Τουρκοκύπριους Αυτό το στοιχείο πρέπει να έχουν όλες οι εκδηλώσεις που αφορούν κυρίως τους αγνοούμενους και κλείνω λέγοντας ότι εμείς οι Κύπροι μας τιμά, εμάς τους Κύπρους μας τιμά το γεγονός ότι 40 χρόνια μετά την εισβολή, 50 χρόνια από τις συγκρούσεις του 63-64 ενώνουμε δυνάμεις με τους τουρκοκύπριους σε μια προσπάθεια να βρεθούν τα οστά των αγνοωμένων μας. Αυτό είναι ένα πολύ μεγάλο μήνυμα που πρέπει και μπορούμε να στέλνουμε προ την Ευρώπη ότι μπορούμε να συμβιώσουμε και μπορούμε να έχουμε ένα κοινό κράτος για την Κύπρη και την Κύπρη. Το τελευταίο που έχω να πω είναι ότι δυστυχώς χρόνο με το χρόνο οι δυνάμεις της κατοχής εδραιώνονται και αυτό είναι κάτι που πρέπει να έχουμε κατά νου όσοι εργάζονται για την επίλυση του Κυπρία. So the same question, why you care about Cyprus? Well, I first got involved in Cyprus when I became an MEP, in fact, because I took over from Pauline Green, who had represented a constituency in North London, who had also been leader of the socialist group when she was here. And she was very involved with the Cypriot community in London. And I became very involved as well, and that's how my interest started. And I've kept very close touch, obviously, with the Cypriots in London and also with Cypriot colleagues here and in Cyprus. I still go to Cyprus regularly and I'm very happy to be there. It's a lovely place. A message to Turkey? Well, what I want to see is a united Cyprus. I think that's what all of us want and that's what we should be working towards. I do think that we won't get united Cyprus while we've got Turkish troops there. So I think that has to be a priority that they go and then we just must keep on negotiating until we can work out a settlement that is agreeable to everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go. Okay. The question is why you care about Cyprus? I do care a lot about Cyprus because it is a very European issue indeed. As we all know, it's like the last uh, divided part that we have in the European Union. It is actually not only divided but also occupied, so we do have to care. And most important, I believe, it is a humanitarian issue. It's a question of human rights, whether you can go to church, whether you can visit each other without showing the passport nowadays. There are so many issues, and especially what steps, uh, is like on my heart uh, is the Committee of Missing Persons, because I feel it is a very, very human issue that you don't know about the one or the other one of your family who is still missing nowadays. And I believe it is a right that people have uh, to know where their father is, what has happened to their brother, what has happened to their uncle, to their husband even. And unfortunately, there is a generation who probably is going to die without knowing about what has happened. And that makes me personally feel very, very sad, I have to say. Um, a message from United Europe to Turkey. Please 
accept the UN resolutions and uh, carry them out as they are written. Thank you very much. I thank you. Thank you. Εκφράζουμε τα συγχαρητήριά μα στην Ευρωβουλευτή κ. Αντιγόνη Παπαδοπούλου για την όμορφη αυτή εκδήλωση την οποία πραγματοποίησε εδώ στο Ευρωκοινοβούλιο για, την, για να υπογραμμίσει ακριβώ το χρέο τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση τόσο για την ανέβρεση των αυνομένων τη Κύπρου αλλά και τη διάσωση τη πολιτική μα κληρονομιά η οποία ακριβώ ε, καταστρέφεται χρόνο με το χρόνο και αυτή η εκδήλωση ακριβώ υπογραμμίζει αυτή το χρέο και την ευθύνη της Ένωσης ώστε να παρέμβει ακόμη δυναμικότερα ώστε να τερματιστεί και η κατοχή στην Κύπρο που είναι ένα ευρωπαϊκό κράτος, κράτος μέλος της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης αλλά και να διασωθεί η πολιτική μας κληρονομιά και να ανεβεθούν, να διακριβωθεί η τύχη των ευρωπαϊκών το συντομότερο δυνατόν. Η σημερινή πρωτοβουλία είναι μέρο των αντικατοχικών εκδηλώσεων που πραγματοποιούμε στο Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο εδώ και 4,5 χρόνια. Στόχο μα είναι να αναδείξουμε το πρόβλημα τη Κύπρου στον Ευρωπαϊκό χώρο και ειδικά στο Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο, όπου λαμβάνονται πολλέ αποφάσει που αφορούν και την έκθεση πρόοδου τη Τουρκία, αλλά και τη στάση που τηρεί για τη διεύρυνση ο κ. Φούλε και άλλοι αξιωματούχοι τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Εδώ σήμερα στείλαμε το μήνυμα ότι για την 31η χρονιά το θέμα των αυνομένων της Κυπριακής τραγωδίας παραμένει ανοιχτό. Είναι ένα ανθρωπιστικό θέμα για το οποίο θα πρέπει να κινητοποιηθούν οι πάντες ώστε να πιεστεί η Τουρκία να ανοίξει επιτέλους όλα αυτά τα, τους χώρους που έχει στα κατεχόμενα για να μπορέσει η ιδέα, η Διερευνητική Επιτροπή Αγνωμένων να μάθει τι απέγινε και ο τελευταίο αγνόμενο μα. Στολίσαμε και φέτο στο δέντρο των αγνωμένων με μαύρο ασφαλέ φωτογραφίε, αυτέ που κρατούσαν διαχρονικά οι γυναίκε με τα μαύρα στο οδόφραγμα τη ντροπή. Και στη μνήμη αυτών των γυναικών, που μια ζωή έστειλα μηνύματα καρτερία, συνεχίσουμε τον αγώνα. Γιατί είναι πολύ άδικο στο γιορτινό τραπέζι να υπάρχει πάντα μια άδεια καρέκλα γιατί δεν έχει διακριβωθεί η τύχη των αγνωμένων της Κυπριακής Τραγωδίας. Πιστεύω ότι με τη συμμετοχή που ήταν αρθρώα των Ευρωβουλευτών, τα μηνύματα που έχουν στείλει οι παρευρισκόμενοι ε, και ήταν Ευρωβουλευτέ από ένα μεγάλο ε, αριθμό χωρό, ε, υπάρχει ακριβώς η δυνατότητα μέσα από την δικτύωση, τη διαφώτιση και κυρίω τη διεκδίκηση η Κύπρος να δει καλύτερες μέρες. Εύχομαι και ελπίζω τα φετινά Χριστούγεννα να είναι για όλο τον κόσμο ειρηνικά και για την δική μου πατρίδα το 2014 να φέρει την ποθητή λευτεριά, την επανένωση του νησιού και οπωσδήποτε καλύτερες μέρες. Γιατί αρκετά τραβήσαμε το 1974, αρκετά τραβούμε το 2013, επιτέλους η Κύπρος θα πρέπει να απαλλαχτεί από την τουρκική κατοχή, αλλά και δυστυχώς και από την Τρόικα, που είναι μια άλλη μορφή οικονομικής κατοχής που μας στήθει σήμερα τον τόπο μας. Καλά Χριστούγεννα, καλή ελευθερία, ειρηνικό το 2014.